Hi, I'm Katherine Hahn, and we're about to go through my IMDb page. <laughs> Can we start with the photo, by the way? This was from a first photo shoot that I did when I got to Los Angeles, and I just didn't know what to do, so I put my fingers in my mouth. And then I think that they couldn't loosen me up in any other way but then blowing like a huge industrial fan right in my face. Do you know your first credit on IMDb? It was something called Flushed. I was working at a hair salon at the time, and I remember when the movie was came out, we premiered it at Lincoln Center. I thought it was a huge deal. I believe next is Crossing Jordan, is that right? Crojo. Crojo. Mm -hmm. It all felt like I wasn't really acting. Like that was, that's what I learned on Crossing Jordan in a nutshell, is the art of just denying. Like we just had to ignore everything that was going on. Stomach gurgles, corpses clearly breathing, oh, uh, shit falling down. I, how to lose a guy in 10 days. Yes, but that was a ball. I still don't really know what that movie was about, to be totally frank. The last Mimsy. It was just trippy. The experience of shooting was trippy and the material was trippy. It was about a rabbit from outer space. I don't know. <laughs> like on a different planet because I was pregs. I was like, wait, so the rabbit is a toy, but it's a robot, but it's an alien? And it's called The Last Mimsy? Who's the other Mimsy? And who's Mimsy? I see it and I'm like, I don't know what's happening. Oh my my kids though, FYI, love it. Oh, it works. Yeah. Step Brothers. Ugh. 10th anniversary. That experience was like, it, sh it shifted something as a performer. It was like the first time, honestly, that I didn't have to just stand and deliver, that like my creative soul and my work life could be actually. I'm gonna roll you into a little ball and shove you up my vagina. You could just live there. It's warm and it's, it's cozy. Vagina? At this point, we're getting you're 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 working your way into your career here. You oh, just, am I? I feel like I'm it. So excited! I feel like you've established yourself here. The IMDb webpage. They li list some traits. Over the top facial expressions. This is really like I, I don't even know what to say about this. This is heartbreaking to me. God. <laughs> Revolutionary Road. I love that when you like open a drawer and a set and like there's the period stuff is in. I mean, not like the period stuff, but like the stuff from the period is in the drawer, like the napkins from the era and the, yeah. not the napkins. Although in that era, that would they there would were be a belt. Yeah, a lot like love. There was a period of my life in which, and you'll see, I think we're getting into it now, in which I played pregnant women. Oh, thank God you can't get pregnant when you're pregnant. Did yep. you do hung? That was a pregnant part. Oh yeah, part. oh yeah. Sorry, Miss Tongue. Yeah. But that was a particular one where I had to be like, I like, I was like, bring, bring, and I, I didn't. <laughs> How is it like, bling, bling? I called him up to be like, Row. can't even say it out loud as I'm you making can't. sound effects. We did some stuff, but I, it wasn't my real pregnant body. The dictator. Mm. Well, you're a pregnant woman again in that mm. one, I guess. I was a pregnant woman who got Sasha Baron Cohen's forearm up <laughs> her, yes. He lost his cell phone in there. How do you know? I'll Curious say about this, my daughter was born while I was making that in Philadelphia. And then Paul Rudd kept texting me, who wants a cheesesteak? while I was in labor. I'm gonna list some key words from some movies you've been in. Oh gosh. And we're just gonna see if you can guess the movie based on the keywords. Okay. Touching foreheads, woman hits man, watching someone have sex. I mean, are these things that I have said or just are in the movie Just somewhere? are in the movie. Touching foreheads. This is where I leave you. Okay. Checks out. Yeah. Drugs, husband-wife relationship, male sitting on toilet. Oh God, guys, I don't know. It's Wonderlust. Really? Who sits on the toilet? I mean, everybody does, right? Everybody poops. <laughs> Dark Around the Stars, that was one I didn't know. That's the one I thought that maybe they had retitled it from oh. the Christmas Eve Alaska style or whatever. <laughs> Secret Life of Walter Mitty. I was, you know, auditioning to play Rizzo in Greece. So I got to wear a little 50s outfit. The plot it, like that in the part movie. was kind of cut out, but then it was like, I'm kind of wearing a Rizzo outfit. She's funny that way. That was a movie that was originally called Squirrels to the Nuts. And it was directed by Peter Bogdanovich. The, he wrote a script a while ago. He's so passionate about film. He still wears the cravat. He, you know, Hadn't made a movie in a while. He kept being like, we got it. Like it was bananas. Like we were doing an old school farce. But the lines were literally like, you know, room 305. Oh, pish tosh. Just shut up and kiss me. Bad moms. I was a, I love that part. I we did not see it coming to hit that hard. It was all like, what? You just never know. 
It's the weirdest business. Transparent. I am super buoyed and proud um, that it was embraced by people that maybe not necessarily had been exposed to trans people were able to find something in it and maybe learn something and find empathy. I love Dick. The Bakes. Yeah. Kevin Bacon's great. Is that what you call him? I call him Bits. It's a cute. <laughs> Bacon Bits. The Bits. I like his Bits. Um, <laughs> Bad Mom's Christmas. Got the gang back Otherwise together. known as Christmas Eve Alaska style. Private Life. Mm, I'm excited for that one. When's that coming out? October. It's another Sundance darling, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> How do you feel talking about all those things? I mean, you gotta feel pretty damn good about you that. You know what, I gotta be honest with you. It is, it does feel chaotic. No one's been able to really pigeonhole it, which I like. That's good, I think, right? I think so too. <laughs> it's Catherine Hahn, and this is my IMD page. I think you said IMD page. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Catherine Hahn, and this is my IMDB page. You're watching Funny or Die TV. Boop, boop, boop. Hi, I'm Jack Black. This is my IMDB page. First on this page, how do you feel about the picture? I mean, it looks a little dopey. It doesn't look like the photo of a serious actor. It is still a good looking pic. It, 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 it looks pretty solid. <laughs> Bob Roberts. So that movie gets accepted at the Cannes Film Festival. I have such a small role, I'm not invited to go to the premiere at Cannes, but my father, weirdly, lives in Cannes at that time. So I fly over to visit my dad, and I sneak in and get it and get my way, we weasel my way into the premiere, and then we end up all going to this party on top of a mountaintop. Tim Robbins is there, Giancarlo Esposito, Robert Altman. And the four of us are smoking a J up on top of a mountain in Cannes, overlooking the gorgeous lights, twinkling lights of Cannes. And I thought, this is it. I kick ass in a major motion picture. Now the career is gonna take off, but then nothing happened and I couldn't get any work for like 10 years. Now there's probably some credits in there, but you'll see that it was all like small parts and bit, bits and chunks for, the, for a long time. Demolition Man. That was a gig. I was really stoked when I got it, but it turned out I was basically just a glorified extra. What would happen is I would go to set every morning at 6 a.m., wait all day in the trailer, and then about 9 p.m., they would say, all right, you're done for the day, and I didn't do anything. And it went like that for weeks and weeks and weeks. And then one day, this is like day fucking 45, okay? I wake up late. I partied too hard the night before. I wake up late, and I'm like, fuck, oh, I'm late. And I put on my pants, I get everything together. And I'm driving, and I'm like, it doesn't matter, fuck, it doesn't matter. And I call my agent, and I say, uh, I'm late, uh, but it doesn't matter, because they, they never use me anyway. And my agent's like, oh, it doesn't matter, does it? I just got a call from Joel Silver, and he said that this Jack Black kid better be dead. They needed you today, Jack. Today was your day on camera. And I was like, fuck! And I got there, but apparently I missed the chance to say like, yo, Dennis, we're really gonna give him one, right? You know, so who the fuck cares? I missed a stupid, shitty line. Touched by an angel. We've got a clip of this one. Oh, really? Yeah, we're gonna put oh, this great. one up. You gonna make sure you get home okay and everything? Hey, hold on. <laughs> Wouldn't waste any energy trying to figure out what just happened. <laughs> It's weird, I have a weird sensation where I'm, I'm horribly embarrassed, but also it's nice to see me looking so young and handsome. Oh my God. Mr. Show. This is a real turning point. David Cross and Bob Odenkirk, who created Mr. Show, discovered Tenacious D in a little club and gave us little bit parts in, in Mr. Show. And that was an exciting time and we were real we lucky to be part of that in, in a small way. Do you have any um, sketches you remember from? Don't stick your dick in these holes. Don't stick your dick in these holes. Don't stick your dick in these holes. So they've got some trivia on your IMDb page, and we'd love for you to fact check these. Had his gallbladder removed. Ding, 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 ding. It's true. And I have to say, fuck gallbladders. They don't do anything. Uh, good riddance. I think everyone should have them removed. Friends with Steve Harvey. You know what? I've done the Steve Harvey show. And I would say it was very friendly. However, we have never once gotten together for like a drink or a meal or even said hi to each other off set of his show the one time I was on it. So I'm gonna say, eh. Yeah, I'd like to be friends with him. Audition for the role of Cubby Barnes in Ransom. I don't know if that's an eh or a ding, ding, ding. So I'm gonna go, 
Bing, bing, bing. Because I don't know. I don't have any recollection, but that doesn't mean it's not true because a lot of drugs have filtered through these these brain synapses, and I don't trust it. The jackal. Me and my and Bruce Willis. One day we went we went to lunch. We had a lunch break. I was like, "What's going on? What's up? What's up with this lunch break? This lunch break's taking a long time. It's three hour lunch break. We're we gonna shoot some more of the scene." And they're like, <sighs> "Bruce." Uh, Went to lunch in Paris. He's gonna be back. So apparently, he jumped in a plane. He really had a taste for something. Then he came back and fucking murdered me. High fidelity. I was stoked, but I was also nervous because I could feel like I already have like my rock and roll like project. It's Tenacious D. I felt like it was maybe stepping on some of the same, and I didn't really want to do it. I wanted to keep those worlds separate. I was like, okay, I will. I want to come and audition though. I want to show you how I would do it. And then I came in and I gave the worst, weirdest, most nervous audition ever. And then I was like, I fucked up the audition, but now I really do want the part. It's a miracle that I got that part in the end because I, I did everything I could to sabotage it and fuck up. And then we did it and it was fucking the thing. That, that's the thing that got, that started my, my career. School of Rock. This is the best film of my career. This is the, where all the planets aligned. We had the first reading of it before we even started shooting where all the kids were cast and we were in New York and we sat down at the table read and we read it out loud and I was like, this fucking rules. So at this point, you've really established yourself and IMDb actually lists your trademarks. Expressive eyes, eyebrows. This is from School of Rock. That's my, that's where I really revealed my eyebrow gymnastics. Stocky frame. I don't even think I would look good skinny, but I do always feel like I'm just 15 pounds away from being my, my sexiest self like a lean, mean 216. Starts speaking in a slow, quiet tempo and begins to sing in a faster, louder cadence. What does that mean? That's the description of me? I start speaking in a slow, quiet tempo and begins to sing faster in a louder cadence. That's not me. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Anchorman. So Anchorman was a rad opportunity to party with one of my heroes, Will Ferrell, and Adam McKay. So I just jumped at that little cameo where I kicked the dogie off the side of the bridge. Relax. There's more Funny or Die TV next. Nacho Libre. Nacho Libs. That was rad. Like if you look at that movie, it's like beautiful. It's funny, but it's also like gorgeous landscapes and incredible experience. Love that Jared Hess. Tenacious D, pick a destiny. Only motion picture I've ever written. It's not for me to say, but I think it has received a, a cult status in the stoner film world. Tropic Thunder. Ben Stiller offers me this role of a lifetime with these people. You know, you got Robert Downey Jr., who at the time you didn't know how he was gonna be. And he's also uh, talking about, he did another little movie uh, Iron Man is going to be coming out, you know, pretty soon. So that was an incredible thing to witness the dude going rocket over thrusters. <sighs> Gulliver's Travels. We didn't get the best reviews. <sighs> and you're saying what went wrong? I'm saying nothing went wrong. I think it's pretty damn good. Next. The Big Year. A uh, bird watching film. Nobody went and saw the film, but I think there are some good chunks in there, especially if you're a bird watcher, then it's a must. Jumanji. Uh, I knew it was going to be good because I read the script and Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart were already attached and I was like, these characters are jumping off the page and my role, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna play the most popular girl in high school. For some reason, I know how to play that. And then it was such a hit. It was way bigger than I even anticipated. And now, um, I think we're gonna make part two. I think you have to. I think you like have to. They kill you if you try to walk away and they clone you. Don't worry, he won't get far on foot. I wrote a letter to Gus Van Zandt. I just had seen so many of his movies and they were just striking a chord with me. And I wrote him a letter and then he never wrote me back. I was like, ah, that was dumb. I shouldn't be writing letters. And then he thinks I'm just trying to get into his next film. And I felt a little gross. But then 10 years later, I get the call. Gus Van Zandt wants you to be in his next movie. I was like, fuck yeah, the letter. It was the letter. So now I just write letters. The house uh, with the clock in its walls? Yeah, I got a new movie called the house with a clock and its walls. And the thing you gotta remember, it's the house. Cause you can easily get off to the wrong foot by saying a house with a clock and the walls. And it's like, no, 
It's the little words are so important in the title. The house with a clock in its walls. And I feel it's it's helpful to say it with an with, uh, incredible amount of intensity. It helps me to remember the title. How does it feel going through all that? <sighs> Feels like a fucking house with a clock <laughs> in its walls. Hey, I'm Jack Black. That was my IMDb page. I'm gonna take a power nap. Hi, I'm Mary Steenburgen, and we're going to go through my IMDb. So settle in. Okay, do you remember your first credit? I would imagine it's the movie Going South. This was a huge thing in my life. I was from Arkansas, and then I went to New York, but then I got nowhere fast, and I was a waitress for six years, and then a casting director saw me in a show at the Manhattan Theater Club, and so I went in and had a meeting. I said are you casting anything in particular? And she said, I am, I'm casting a movie called Going South that I'd love to get you in on, but it's really well-known actresses or very beautiful models. And I didn't fall into either of those two categories. And as I was leaving, I hear a voice saying, are you waiting to see me? And I realized it's Jack Nicholson. And Jack Nicholson at that time was a huge star. He, the biggest star, because he, he had done Cuckoo's Nest. There was nobody bigger than Jack. So I just kept my head down and I, I said, no, I'm not waiting to see you. And he goes, why not? So he walked over to the desk, picked up a script, handed it to me. He just kept me reading and reading. And we read every scene in the movie like two or three times. Then he goes, I want to direct this movie. So you know what that means, don't you? And I said, yes, but I didn't have a clue what that meant. Everybody in Hollywood said, there's no way he's going to cast an unknown person as a lead in a movie when he wants to direct. And so several days later, when I was serving crepes at the Magic Pan, which is where I was a waitress. I go and I check my answering machine and they say, you're going to Hollywood for a screen test for going south. A whole bunch of famous people tested, but somehow I'm the one that got it. I got that part. That's an incredible first movie story. I know. And didn't you say there was a Warren Beatty part to this story? So a couple of days after I met with Jack, I call my answering service, and then Warren Beatty comes on the phone, you know? And it's like, freaking Warren Beatty. And he said, I'm doing a movie, but my friend Jack made me sign a piece of paper saying, I won't use you for my movie unless he turns you down for his movie. And I'm like, what? I'm standing in the restaurant I work in, and I have two movie stars fighting over me and signing bits of paper. Incredible. I somehow managed not to sleep with either one of them, which in itself is some kind of record for the 70s. So do you remember what movie number two is? Yes, number two was called Time After Time. Yes. I married my co-star Malcolm McDowell, and I had two children with him. Melvin and Howard. The first time I read that script, it was sent to Jack Nicholson to play Melvin. He gave it to me as an example of great writing, but I, of course, read it and just went, well, it's also an example of a great part, and uh, I won Best Supporting Actress and Golden Globe. I mean, that's movie number three. That's insane. Yeah. So by this point, I mean, you've won the Oscar. I've done that. I feel like uh, some of your trademarks are starting to develop. High-pitched voice with a southern accent. I don't have a high-pitched voice. Not high-pitched. But I do have a southern accent, and if I'm mad or drunk, it's pronounced. That's my only trait. That's your only trait. What's eating Gilbert Grape? Unforgettable. My whole part was just kissing Johnny Depp. Pontiac Moon. Pontiac Moon was a big deal to me because I did marry another actor, and that would be Ted Danson, who I still am married to all these years later. Nobody's baby. The best thing about that movie is you will never know that's Gary Oldman. It doesn't look like him, it's amazing. You know what, I don't think I knew what Gary Oldman looked like that's, until five years ago. I like a, a transformer. Elf. Sitting there looking at Will in an elf suit and trying to eat spaghetti with maple syrup and not laugh. It was just extraordinary. Step Brothers. Step Brothers is the pinnacle of my career. It's all downhill after that. John C. Riley and Will Ferrell were just insanely hilarious. You never knew what was going to happen. And people, you know how in movies, it's really boring to be on somebody else's movie set. And so people think they want to come watch a movie being filmed, but they stay five minutes when they realize how repetitive it is. With Step Brothers, people came in the morning and got their seat and stayed there all day. I'm going to give you some keywords of movies that you've been in. You see if you can guess the movie. Okay. Troublemaker 
filmmaker, male tied up, adult actor playing a minor. Oh, that's Clifford with Marty Short. That's one of the best, worst movies of all time. Adult actor playing a teenage boy, reading a letter aloud, breakfast machine. Is this Elf? It says Back to the Future 3. What? Um, Clayton. Clara Clayton. Four Christmases. Dwight Yoakam played my boyfriend, and I think we made out a lot, and uh, <laughs> made out a lot as characters, of course. I thought that went unsaid, but. Okay. If you feel the need to say it. Okay. <laughs> I know, it's weird that I said it. The Open Road? The Open Road was a film, um, it's about the open, the openness of the road. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's, it's okay. Seven Days in Hell. <laughs> <laughs> it was only two days in hell for me. <laughs> Curb your enthusiasm. We're playing Ted and Mary. On the show, we're now divorced, and it's really crazy how many people believed that. I had friends call me and say, I'm so, tell me it's not true. And I went, it's not true, and you're an idiot. <laughs> the, the wonderful last man on earth. It still hurts to talk about it because it's, I don't know, they say it's over. I will always be slightly in mourning for it. And if anybody out there wants to like, just start it back up again. Oh, you mean like a call to Netflix or Amazon to do a few more seasons? Or at least, yeah, it, yeah, do that. <laughs> Book club. Well, it's a lightning in a bottle because who makes a movie with four women, the youngest of whom is 65 years old? It just made you feel good about being the age that you are and, and being lucky enough to be in this business, you know? That's the last thing on the list. I mean, how do you feel going through that? Old, but in a good way. That was me, Mary Steenburgen, and my IMDb.